Um, okay. First of all, imagine you're playing a game. Let's take this current scenario as it is, as playing a game. Your GPU uses only around 28% and your CPU is, is you know, at around 75%. Imagine playing a game and this is what you see when you're uh, alt tabbing to Windows or maybe you play in a, in a windowed screen and at the same time you're watching on these uh, dials. It doesn't really matter what software you use to you know measure the CPU and GPU usage. Um, once you get into specific details like voltage and stuff um, and in a way also the frequency um, you, you're going to need very specific software for that that's specifically tailored to that specific piece of hardware. Excuse the, the heavy usage of the word specific, but it is very specific. You can't just use any so piece of software to read out everything from any computer. It just doesn't work. It's got to be very inaccurate. <coughs> but when it comes to usage, it's usually fairly accurate. Even these shitty little uh, Windows gadgets are relatively ac accurate. Um, so imagine playing a game, and this is the scenario. This means that the GPU is not doing a lot, so it can mean multiple things which have very significant um, effects on your performance and what you perceive as performance. Because first of all, low usage of your GPU might mean that the game is simply very old and doesn't require a lot of processing power from your GPU and it lets the CPU do most of the work. The second thing, the second reason could be, which is horrible, if the game is not optimized to use the graphics card. Um, this is a very common problem with um, console games that have been ported to PC. Uh, usually it's done in a very unprofessional, very shabby way. Um, and this results in very poor performance, even though the game looks like shit. Okay. Um, and third, well, let's skip that one. Let's keep. Let's just keep it simple. Let's stay with stick with these two. Okay. So it could mean either unoptimized performance, or it's just a game that just simply doesn't use your GPU a lot, but relies more on your CPU. Um, second of all, a high CPU usage is usually a good thing, okay, usually. If your CPU usage is at 100% and your GPU usage is at a lower percentage, then it could mean that your CPU is bottlenecking, which is the third reason I was going to, but I segued into it. Your CPU might be bottlenecking your GPU, ergo your GPU is either way too fast for your CPU or your CPU is simply way too slow, it's too old. And that is a big problem because basically you bought a, a GPU a video card for nothing. I mean it doesn't do anything because your, your, your processor is keeping it back, it's holding it back quite literally. Um, and there's also another scenario where the CPU usage is very low and the GPU usage is very high. That could indicate that your video card is too old in comparison to your processor. So it might be an idea to upgrade your, uh, your video card if it's always on 100% usage in a good optimized game. For example, Batman Arkham City, Bar uh, Arkham, uh, Arkham Asylum, Metro, Last Light, um, Battlefield 3, uh, games like that that are very optimized for PC usage that's the perfect, and use DirectX 11 by the way, so it really taxes your system at the max. Um, yeah, so those would be good titles to test it with. Um, and now we're going to the next step. Uh, we, it gets a little more complicated now. Um, if you notice that your CPU is, is, is usage is fairly high, but it's not max, and you see that your GPU is fairly low, the usage is fairly low, then you could try and enable anti-aliasing. Because if your video card doesn't have a lot of work to do, then increasing the anti-aliasing mode... Um, 
why can't I set it? That's great. That's just great, you know. Why can't I just set it? All right, override, yeah, there we go. So that, again, if your GPU is not doing a lot and your CPU is not maxed out, you could try and, and enable, or if it's already enabled, increase the anti-aliasing. Because the higher you set the anti-aliasing, the more GPU taxing it's gonna get. Because this is totally done, 100% done by your video card anti-aliasing. Uh, it uses up a lot of memory, which is good because uh, video card memory is rarely used to the max, very rarely. Even with ultra textures, it's still not used to the max. I only have 700 and... Oh, wait, I have a gigabyte of video memory? What the hell? Hmm. I was always under the assumption that I had 768 megabytes. Okay. That's good to know. Um, but anyway, it, it rarely ever uses the thousand uh, megabytes of memory on my video card. It rarely does. So, <coughs> but increasing anti-aliasing will increase the memory used usage and increase the uh, GPU usage. So that's a good thing to do. So your your GPU isn't being wasted, in a sense. The other thing you could do is increase the shadow. Um, resolution or quality filtering whatever it, it depends on, on, on the game that you're playing but uh, shadows are being calculated by the GPU as well in, a, in, a, in an optimized proper PC title that is um, so again if your CPU is fairly taxed but not at the max and your GPU is fairly low uh, in usage then increasing the shadows will help increase the GPU usage Specifically, ambient occlusion, which is a very, very um, video card intensive uh, technology. It looks great if it works and if you have set it to the maximum quality, because you can have a low quality and a high quality setting. The quality performance, the quality setting, and the performance setting. Performance setting looks fairly shitty, but the quality setting looks really good. It adds a lot of realism to the the scene. So, if your GPU has the margin then you should enable that to increase the GPU activity but not increase the CPU usage activity. That's the whole thing, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to balance this, these two forces out, the CPU and the GPU. Um, so for example if your GPU and your CPU are, are around the same level then this would be particularly useful um, because if you have a bottleneck CPU or a bottleneck GPU, then you're kind of in trouble anyway, because that's really a, not an ideal situation. And it's kind of a waste of money, if you think about it, unless you're waiting to upgrade one of the two components and at a later stage when you have the money to do so, which, you know, which is a good thing. For example, having a shitty processor but buying a very good, expensive graphics card might not do a lot for your gaming experience at that point, but if you upgrade your processor, it will make a huge difference. So sometimes it is useful, but you know, it depends. Um, texture filtering besides anti-aliasing doesn't do a lot. For exa example, anisotropic filtering uh, doesn't use a lot of um, processing power anyway. It's a very lightweight technology. Uh, V-Sync, it's uh, basically CPU. So you shouldn't enable it unless you have extremely good performance. And I really do mean extreme. Um, so those are the th two things that you can, can do to increase the, the video card usage. If you see that your CPU is already you know, being taxed quite a lot, but your, your video card isn't, then you could increase either shadows and ambient inclusion or anti-aliasing. Uh, so it looks better and it has no or very little impact on performance. So that's basically how it works. And that's why it's extremely important, really extremely important, to monitor your GPU and your CPU usage. Because if there is a, a dis, an, an unbalance between the two, then something's up. Either your CPU or your GPU is bottlenecking the entire system, which is the worst case scenario. 
unless it's planned, or the game is not optimized, and in that scenario, you should just ignore anything. You just you know, just don't 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 uh, um, don't overanalyze it because it's just a matter of shitty um, programming. For example, if you use a PlayStation 2 emulator like I do, I have a PlayStation 2 emulator which is PCSX2. Uh, some games work flawless, you know, they work excellent, like Final Fantasy uh, X works just great, uh, God of War 1 works absolutely flawless. God of War 2, however, has slight issues, uh, slight uh, performance issues. And you might think, well, how is it possible? Because it's still the same emulator and the games are basically, you know, they're all of the same level because they're all made specifically for the PlayStation. So if you emulate the PlayStation, you should at least have some kind of consistent performance, right? Wrong. Um, it's because uh, the, 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 the emulator, the software, whether it's a game or an emulator, just isn't optimized to use uh, your, your video card. Usually it's the lag thereof um, because an emulator uses a lot of CPU um, uh, power, but it doesn't use a lot of GPU power unless you start upscaling and you start increasing the uh, resolution and you start increasing the amount that's being filtered. In that case, you absolutely will see, you know, an increase in your or your video card activity. But um, that's what I'm trying to say. Even though you're playing on a monster of a computer, you still might be able to get very poor performance, and it's not your PC. Okay. So, um, don't start freaking out when you're playing a shitty port. A lot of ports are horrible. An example of a great port, if I can add, I don't know how long this clip is, but it's taking quite a long time. I know, I'm, I'm a little too verbose, I know, but I like to not, I, I'd like there to not be any ignorance, if possible. So the last thing I was going to say, Transformers, um, Fall of Cybertron, and War of Cybertron, they're both excellent, excellent ports. Um, those are games that are obviously designed for consoles. Uh, they're made to be played with a gamepad. Um, but they have been ported over to um, the PC, and it's flawless. The performance is absolutely perfect. It really is. It looks great, it looks awesome. And at the same time, it runs at you know like 120 frames per second at all times. Uh, so it means that it, it has been uh, properly ported to the PC. You can see, you can notice that by two things. First one is uh, very, very um, high clarity of you know that is, that which is being rendered. Everything's very sharp, very crisp. Uh, and second of all, it runs great. That's how you can see or notice when uh, a game has been optimized for the PC or not. Um, so I hope we've covered basically everything. Well, not, not even nearly any everything, but um, I think I've covered the basics. Let's wrap it up in a nutshell. If there's a discrepancy between your CPU and your GPU usage, you might want to look into it. Um, you might want to look at the bottleneck, the potential bottleneck that the CPU or the GPU can cause, which basically wastes your entire system. It, it's really important to, to um, keep an eye on that. Second of all, you might be able to increase very specific graphic settings in a game, but you should, let, you should leave other graphic settings. Um, uh, that's very specific. For example, the shadows, the ambient occlusion, and the anti-aliasing. Those are extremely uh, video card GPU sensitive. So if you notice that there's uh, a lack of GPU activity, but there's plenty of CPU activity, then you might be able to increase one of those three options um, to you know get more bang for your buck, to make your video card do some more work. But th because in essence, that's what a video card is supposed to do. It should be running at 100%, or at least around 90. Um, because if it doesn't, it's basically not using itself. And that means that you're not using the video card that you spend a lot of money on. All right, so there we go. If you have any questions, just pop them down below, um, and I'll try to answer them, as always, since no one watches my videos anyway. I have all the time in the world to answer your questions.